how to reach the masses men of very birth for an answer Jesus gave the key saying I if I be lifted up from the earth I'll draw all men unto me you ought to lift him up oh lift him up Bread, lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust Him and do not doubt the word that He said, I'll draw all men unto me. You ought to lift the Savior up. Oh, lift Him up. Come on, lift him, 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 Latrice, give me some more here, lift him, lift him, lift him, come on, lift the name of Jesus, lift the name of Jesus, above cancer, lift the name of Jesus, above debt, lift the name of Jesus, above divorce, lift the name of Jesus, above Biden, lift the name of Jesus. Above all politicians, lift the name of Jesus. Above all doctors, lift the name of Jesus. Above all banks, lift the name of Jesus. Above all your boos and your boo-hoos, lift the name of Jesus. Let all the other names fade away, but lift the name of Jesus and all things will be done right in his name. Come on, bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. He has brought me all the way. And when I look at you, I can tell he's been good to you too. Somebody, I said somebody, somebody ought to praise the Lord. Somebody ought to lift him up. Somebody ought to say thank you. Somebody ought to cry out to him because he's been good to you hallelujah 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 blessed name 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 Right there in your house, bless his name. While you're driving, bless his name. While you're sitting in the pew, bless his name. While you're standing, bless his name. With pain in your body, bless his name. No money in your pocket, bless his name. With a big wall in front of you, bless his name. With your enemies all around you, bless his name. I dare you to bless the name of Jesus.
Have a book. You ought to bless his name. I say, you ought to bless his name. He's been too good for you to be silent. He's been too good for you to be cool. He's been too good for you to be dignified and sophisticated. Because if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you'd be boxed up or locked up. But God, have mercy one more time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Anybody know that you know? Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Come on, church. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Church, come on, church. Ain't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Pick me up, yeah, pick me up. Turn me around. Turn me around, pick me up. Turn me around, he's my friend. Can't nobody, yeah, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I need you to say, oh, can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus, do me like Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord, can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's my friend. Come on one more time, he's my friend. One more time now. If he brought you out, give me praise. If he healed your body, give me praise. If he opened the door, break it. If he opened the door, give me praise. God, how we love you and how we bless you. We give ourselves away to you. We're so grateful that you have had mercy upon us one more time. We're so grateful that you have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. But your amazing grace have once again Look beyond our faults and saw our needs. And we're so grateful. We're so grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Wherever you are, that's the house of God. We thank you, O oh God, that you are here. 
that you are present, that you are almighty, and you're God all by yourself. You're God if we praise you, and you're God if we don't. But we're so grateful that you gave us another chance, another opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus, another chance to tell a dying world that Jesus lived, another chance to hear your word. Come now, Jesus, speak in our language and speak on our level that we might see, hear, and receive your word on good ground, that we may bear forth fruit of the Spirit, that those who see us might see you in us, that you might get glory, honor, and praise. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray and we do give you thanks. And the saints of God said amen. 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 And amen. How good God is. How good God is. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise wherever you are. Come on, whether you're at home, on the job, in the car, at the supermarket, in the sanctuary, wherever you are, you ought to give God some praise. He's a mighty good God. Oh, my God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God. He's here. He's here. He's here. Yeah, he's here. He has a word. Hallelujah. Has a word for you. Has a word for you. Got some things to share. But just now ain't the time to do it. Right now is Jesus' time. Yeah, yeah. Right now is, is Jesus' time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get Jesus his due. And then we'll share. We've got baptism after us as well. <sighs> we want to continue our series from John 4. And that uh, hoochie woman who got holy and got saved. And I've concluded I'd rather deal with a hoochie than a deal than a deal with a holy roller any day of the week. Because the super saints and the holy rollers can't tell them anything. They know everything about God and everything about church. But the hoochies and the hustlers, they know they need God. And they're open to God. And I can remember being a hustler and chasing hoochies. And I know what God will do. Be careful about judging a book by its cover. Be careful about determining somebody's destination by their location. <laughs> Man look on the outside, but God looks on the inside. God knows from our mother's womb where we're destined to be. Sometimes you got to go through Hoochieville. Got to go through Hustler Town to get on holy ground. From John chapter 4, beginning with verse 19 today. After Jesus then told this woman about her romance life and her failed relationships, she got this perception about him. And then she has these questions for him. He has a response for her. I'm calling this the big reveal part two. Verse 19 said, the woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. 
But the hour is coming. And now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Because God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The big reveal part two. You may be seated. Part one, the earliest slice of scripture before this. Jesus revealed or dealt with this woman's personal life. One of the things or many things I love about God is that he's not so high and lifted up that he cannot or will not deal with my personal mess. That he's a holy God, and I don't know why he would, because if I was that holy, I'm not sure I would. But he's a holy God, but he often gets right smack down into our mess. When we don't think he's there because we stink, and we don't look good. And we usually stink and don't look good because we haven't behaved good. We made some bad choices. We made some dumb choices. Oftentimes we made some repeated choices. And because we have repeated this dumb behavior, because we've been stuck on stupid, we assume that he is not in the midst of our mess. And I love him because no matter what mess I get in, he's right there. And he deals with this woman in her messy life and he tries to offer to her some water. She don't even know what she's passing up on. She don't even know the blessing that's in her presence. I shared last week how so often we walk right into Jesus' presence and walk right away from Jesus' presence, avoiding him because of the way he looked, the way he smelled, and our perception of who this individual must be. But in the first big reveal, he just wanted her to know that while she wanted some physical water, because she was physically thirsty, that he wanted her to know that he wanted to quench more than her physical thirst. That he wanted to deal with the pain and the shame of her past. And he wanted to deal with it to the degree that her test would become her testimony. That instead of being ashamed, she would share with everybody that come across her path, come see a man who told me everything I ever done, which meant he knew all about me, my public and private sins, and yet he accepted me. I love, I, I love uh, opening line of uh, one of uh, Rick Warren's books where he says, we must get to the point where we understand that uh, compassion for other people does not mean we compromise our convictions. That super saints and religious folks often think because you have a conviction against a certain life or against a certain lifestyle or against a certain behavior that you can't be compassionate toward people who may practice that. Yet God has been so compassionate toward us while we were stuck on stupid. But now, when religion, better yet, when godliness starts to hit home, when godliness starts to get us to the point where it's, it's pricking at our hearts, it's then we try to hide 
behind religion. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm blessing highly flavored. The Lord is my shepherd. We start quote scriptures. We start telling folks about how we went to church and what church we go to and all that kind of who our pastor is and all that kind of stuff. We, we try to hide behind religion when, when godliness hits personal. But you know what? I wouldn't have a God that would not deal with me in my pain. In my mess, I need a God that when I'm really bleeding, he gets right down where I'm bleeding at and puts his hand on my... I need a God who ain't afraid or ashamed to get with me while I'm in my mess, not waiting on me to get out of my mess. So this woman, you know, she kind of grabbed the remote... Try to change the channel. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about my bedroom life? Let me tell you about my church life. So you don't judge me. And so she brought up this subject to you. You know what, Mr. Jew man? Mr. Rabbi, Mr. Man, who's already broke the barrier because you talk to a woman you shouldn't be talking to in public. And you talk to a hoochie, and you supposed to be a holy man. You breaking these barriers. You, and then you're telling me about my own personal life. You sound like one of them men we heard about. Never seen it in the... Samaritan faith, because we don't practice that stuff. But over there in that other church, they practice, They have these things, these, these people they call uh, uh, prophets. You, you sound like a prophet, because prophet speaks into the lives of other people, information that other people have not shared with them. That's when you start saying, uh-oh. That's, that's, that's when you start you thought I said, please don't pull the cover, don't, don't, pull, don't pull all the cover off me. Don't tell all my business. Can't tell you how many times at the service, folks come up to me and say, Pastor, you didn't have to tell all my business today. In fact, the last two, last two Sundays at the service, I won't call nobody's name, but somebody come to me and said, would you please tell God to stay out of my business that much? <laughs> but prophets were those that was considered so insightful, had so much information that they had to be men of God. They had to be people who God had whispered into their ear our own personal business. That's when we know. That's when we know God is in the place because this preacher is standing up here in front of you, in front of everybody else, and he's reading your mail, and you start looking at person you sleep with, person at your house. Did you talk to him? Did you say something? Did you send PG a text? No. No, but your father has a way of getting mail to you. Can I throw this in just by way because I'm in that area? Because I'm in, This is the reason why everybody needs a church home. Everybody needs a, a location, a post office, spiritual post office box where your mail could be sent to, where you know when you get to that, listen, when, 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 when I get stuff that got my name on it and got my address on it and got my suite number on it, I know that's for me. Hello, somebody. When I get this general mail kind of stuff to the residence of, you know where that go, don't you? But oh, when it has my name on it, <laughs> I know it's, that's what God does for prophets, and that's why you need a church home, because you need to go, you need to have some place where you can get your mail regularly. Yeah, yeah, you get your mail, get your mail regularly. And so this, this woman changed the subject, said, um, well, you must be a prophet. So let me ask you this question, seeing you, you must be a prophet. He didn't say he was a prophet, but that's an assumption. That's a whole other sermon, how much we assume things about God and about life and about people. And you know the old term about assume when you assume. 
I won't go down there. I won't go down there. But you know, you, you, you know, you know, but yet we still do it. We, we still do it, and then we wonder why we smell like a, okay, didn't mean to go there, but there it is. He said, she said, you must be a prophet, so can you tell me this? We Samaritans, we worship here on this mountain because the Jews wouldn't let us worship with them because they said we were half-breeds. So we made our own church. We got our own spot. We worship here on this mountain. Y'all worship down in Jerusalem. So which place is it? Which, which place is it that we ought to worship? And Jesus had a response. Her perception was that he was a prophet, and her understanding was worship was at a place. That if you're going to worship... You had to get to a geographical place. Now, I'm one to believe that if you really worship God, there, I just told you, you need a spiritual post office box. You do need some place where you regularly go and God knows that's where he can send your mail to because you're going to be there to pick it up. You, you do need that, but you also need to know that God is so big that you can't limit him to some geographical place. We get talk about this is Holy Ghost headquarters. Really? You can't box God in like that. No, 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 no. And, and Jesus, Jesus' response to her, Jesus, Jesus' response to her uh, was, was first of all, uh, and this is the first of the big reveals about her spiritual life because he went from her personal life to her spiritual life. And, and, and the, first, the first point is that the big reveal about her spiritual life is that worship is not about a place. It's about a person. It's not about a place. <laughs> it's, 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 it's wonderful. It's, it's, it's wonderful that, that uh, 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 you come to a place. And, and the only thing that makes a place holy ground, it ain't the flowers there. It's not the carpet there. It's not even the cross there. But what makes a place holy ground is the person there. <laughs> and, and, and worship, real worship, is not about a place. That, now, when you get to your regular place of worship, you, 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 ought, not, you ought not to feel uncomfortable getting your praise on. You ought not to be uncomfortable saying thank you, Jesus, and amen. That when you get to your regular place, you, you, you ought not to be ashamed to praise his praise name. But worship ain't about a place. No, 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 it's not about a place. If we didn't learn anything else in 2020, if we didn't learn anything else from COVID-19 protocols, you ought to have learned that worship is not about a geographical place. You don't have to come here to worship God. And you already know that every time you come here, you don't worship God. Sometimes you just come for a little meeting. Sometimes you come for other reasons. But everybody don't come to the house of worship every time to worship. But let me tell you, ain't nothing wrong with every time if you do. Because worship is not about a place. It's about a person. You worship God here, but you ought to worship God in your car. You ought to worship God in your house. You ought to worship God in your bedroom. You worship God in your bathtub. You worship God at work. You, you can worship, worship God at Walmart. You can worship God at the courtroom. You can worship God at the hospital room. It's not about a place. We get all caught up because we got to get to a place. <laughs> now, it's wonderful when you get to a place because he said, well, two or three are gathered. <laughs> he said, I'll inhabit the, the praises of the saints. 
that when you get together, you start praising. He'll be right there in the middle. He will manifest. Now, he's always there, but when the saints come together and praise him, he will make himself known. You're able to see him move. Yeah, 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 yeah. When the saints get together and they start to lift up his name and really give him praise, and worship, you will see the move of God. But the big worship, the big reveal of her spiritual life, that she had to understand that um, worship is not about a place. It's about a person. And that you're worshiping God. God Almighty. God all by himself. <laughs> you're worshiping him who created all things. Who was in the beginning before the beginning began. You, you're worshiping him <laughs> who could do anything but fail. You're worshiping him who made the moon, the stars, and the sun. You're worshiping him who made the grass green and the sky blue and made apples sweet and all that other stuff, made ducks quack and cows move. You're worshiping him who made you in his image. You're worshiping him. And so often we get messed up because um, some of us can't worship if we ain't in a certain place. Yeah, we, 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 can't, we can't, quote, unquote, get our praise on. If, watch this, not only if we're in, not in a certain place, but if certain people and certain things ain't in a certain place at certain times. As long as our favorite singer is singing, we can worship. But don't let some little girl come up and ain't never sung before. I don't know her. We... We can worship as long as our pastor, our preacher is preaching, but don't let this stranger come into place. As if God can't use somebody you don't know to speak to you and deliver a word to you. We make it about a place when it's not about a place, it's about a person. And the person it's about is really two people, really. It's about God Almighty and you. Ain't about me. I got my own praise to do. And boy, let me tell you, y'all don't, y'all don't trick me at all. I don't care what y'all do. I make sure I get my praise on. So nobody know like I know how good God has been to me. Nobody know like I know the hell I've been through and the challenges I've had this week. Nobody knows like I know the pains I felt and the heartaches I've been through. But God has brought me up, so I got to get my praise on. Yeah, he's been good to me. He's been good to me. So, <laughs> that worship is not about a place, but about a person. But then she said, um, um, our fathers worship on this mountain, and you Jews said that in Jerusalem, that's the place where you ought to worship. Jesus' response to her uh, was that not only is it not about a place, it's not about your understanding. Worship is not about your understanding, but it's about your faith. It's about your belief. I'm so glad about that because there's so many folks who erroneously worship God. They are sincere, but sometimes sincerely wrong. You, 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 you look through history, particularly church history, and, and nowhere does it seem more clearer than in the American history pages where the American church participated and supported slavery. And they did it using scriptures. Yet they would worship God. And God apparently favored them to a degree. But now don't be too hard on them. Because I've seen some ignorant people worship God in their own ignorance. Because we buy into this thing that, well, as long as I'm sincere, God is God. And I tell folks, you can be sincere and get, yet be sincerely wrong. 
But I'm so glad that God honors our pure thoughts. And in his own ways, he guides us individually and collectively to get where he wants us to get. So he will allow some folks to worship him even in ignorance. The Samaritans didn't believe in the prophets. They only believed in the, in the Pentateuch law. They worshiped on the mountain. The Jews who had the law and the prophets, they worshiped in Jerusalem because that's what the prophet said that they should worship. But in spite of the differences, God allowed the worship to go on. And Jesus said, listen, true worship ain't about you understanding. You ought to try to understand as best you can. And he's going to tell you in a minute that you ought to worship him in truth and in spirit. So you need to learn. Nothing wrong with being ignorant today. But the things you are ignorant of today, you ought not to be ignorant of tomorrow. You ought to seek to grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. There ought to be a maturing of the faith in every child of God. That you ought not to be the same today that you were five years ago. In fact, you ought not, nobody ought to be the same today as you were before COVID. And COVID alone ought to have been enough to grow your behind up and say, God will make a way out of no way. God will cover you vaccine or no vaccine. God will provide for you. That COVID ought to taught you something. You ought to grow in the faith. That real worship is not about you understanding all the books of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you knowing all the verses. No, no, no. A real worship is about you believing that God is God Almighty and God all by himself. You believing that God made you fearfully and wonderfully. He made you somebody special. You are somebody that God ordained you. That God put your mama and your daddy together. Whether it was lust or love, God had that thing together. God brought you from your mother's womb. God covered you in your childhood situation. God took care of your troubles in teenage years. God was with you in your 20s when you didn't know what you were doing. God provided a job for you in your 30s. God gave you health in your 40s. God kept you clothed in your right mind in your 50s. And all the days of your life, God has been good to you. Worship is about believing that God didn't bring me this far. I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am. And I believe God. Yeah. 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 Worship. Worship is not about a place. No, it's about a person. It's not about our understanding of whether it's in the mountain or in the valley. The truth of the matter is, if you got God with you, you'll worship him on the mountaintop and down in the valley. You worship him when you got money. You worship him when you're broke. <laughs> you worship him when everybody patting you on your back. You worship him when your best friend stab you in the back. You, you worship God anywhere. When, when you got God, it makes no difference who's around you. You just, you got to praise him. When you look back and see where God has brought you from, when you get a text message that mama got healed, when you get a message that your baby got delivered, when you get the word that your grandchild is graduating, when you realize just how far God has brought you, you got to praise him. Any way in any place. Yeah, yeah, you gotta praise, you gotta praise them. And, and, and you don't you don't you don't do that karaoke stuff. You don't lip sync. <laughs> no, no, no. You come up with your own song. Yeah, you you come up with your own praise. Cause nobody knows like you know. Just how good God. Yeah. 
to worship, it is said, is to ascribe worth to. It is one of the original words means to kiss toward, to honor. Yeah, it's, um, it, it, it is indeed to show the worth of, of something or someone. And Jesus said to this woman, you worship what you know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. You don't have the right understanding, but you still believe, so we call it worship. He said, but the time is coming. The hour is here <laughs> when true worships, true worshipers, which says to me there are false worshipers. There are those who get a praise on, but it's not to God. And church, we got to be careful. We got to be careful. I was challenging the band and the praise team before service. We got to be careful because when you've done this thing for a while, you can do it in your sleep. Yeah, well, you, you the song, you done played, you done preach. I can do it in my sleep. Wake me up 1.30 in the morning. I give you a text. I give you three points. I give you clothes in my sleep because I've done it for so long. And it's careful because as we live this Christian life and we worship God, even in the pews with the lifting up of our hands and the patting of our feet and the rocking from side to side, we can just go through the motion. But real worship is what God seeks. He's looking for real worship. Real worship is when the spirit of the human man connects up with the Holy Spirit of the divine. Yeah, it's, 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 it's about being authentic. It's about being true. It's about being honest, about being genuine. That... Um, we often come to church, what we call church, we come to the place of worship to get something. This is what we say. Give me you. <laughs> Everything else can change. We, we come to get something. Give me peace. Lord, give me love. Give me a mate. Lord, give me a job. Lord, give me some joy. Lord, give me direction. Well, we, we, we come, and, and here's what we say, to get our praise on. We seek to come to the place of worship to get some. But real worship is not just, it's not a place, but a person. It's not just about understanding but belief but real worship is not about getting something real worship is about giving something <laughs> it's, it's, it's about giving yourself yeah I had to put that in there to give yourself because and I said giving some folks I said, see I know they preach you want to give some more money 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 that's all preachers the church talk about money 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 look you keep your money all you want to if it is your money it's only your money if your name is on it God is not interested in your money your money don't impress him at all what he wants from you is not your money he wants the honey of your heart. He wants you. He wants you to give him you. How many times, don't raise your hand, but how many times have you come through those sacred doors, sat on those sacred pews, next to those sacred people, Listen to the sacred word preach. 
Listen to the sacred song song. Watch the other saints get their praise on and rejoice and talk about, ooh, how great God is, how good was worship. And you left out those doors the same way you came in. You saying you don't take all that. He was all right, but he was <laughs> I heard him better. They didn't even know all the words to the song. Well, you're full of criticism. Because worship for you that day, yeah, all right. But it wasn't that cool. It wasn't that refreshing, that, that inspiring. It wasn't that refreshing, as you recall, the times you, oh, girl, I, we had church up there today. You didn't have that kind of day. No, no, you just left out the same way you came in. Burden and heavy down. And, oh, God, I got to go back to work. Oh, I got to deal with that Negro again. Oh, man, I don't know what I'm going to do about this beer. You left the same way you came. Can I tell you why? Because you came to get. <laughs> True worship is not about what you get out of it. It's about what you give to it. When you give God you and you and you and you, when you give God you, God will not let you I'll give him. And I get it. I get it. You know, I'm kind of cool myself. Try to be smooth. You got to shout over everything. You ain't got to dance over everything. You ain't got to clap over everything. You ain't got to stand and wave your hand over everything. But now, if you're going to shout over the Warriors and Steve Kirby, <laughs> Steph Curry, if you're going to shout over the Pistons just having some promise, if you're going to shout over Matthew Stafford finally getting released, if you're going to shout over your grandchild graduating, if you're going to shout over the doctor's report being reversed. If you're going to shout about your nephew getting out of jail. If you're going to shout about that bill getting paid when you didn't know how it was going to get paid. If you're going to shout about some fella blinking at you and winking at you and asking you for your digits. If you're going to shout over God keeping that car from hitting somebody when you just knew you were going to hit somebody. If you're going to shout over any of that then you ought not to shout over anything more than you shout over a God who died for your sins, who rose again, who lives in you, who keeps making a way for you. You ought to shout over that. Give worth to him. It said, those who worship him, those who give worth to him, must worship him in spirit. And in truth, you, you do know as much money and time that you spend trying to fix you up. You do know there's more to you than what you see in the mirror. All that clothes and Perfume, cologne, all that wig and beweave, all them nails and lashes, all them shoes and bags, all that stuff just to make the external you look good, look presentable. There's more to you. In fact, that ain't even the real you. That's just the temporary house that you live in. Because one of these days, that old you going to kick you out. And the real you going to need another house, not made with hands. 
Is that real you? The spiritual you, Davenport. The real you, the you that came from God and going back to God. That you is the you you need to present to God in worship. My God. That's why every now and then, every now and then your hand just go up. And then did you tell your hand to go up? The real you say, oh, Jesus, he's been good. Oh, Jesus. You ain't trying to say amen in the supermarket. But the real you see what God is up to. Say amen. Praise God. Praise God. Folks, what is it? So praise the Lord. Praise. That, that price came down. Praise the Lord. Praise. The real you will overwhelm the temporary you and say, yeah, I got to open up my mouth. Let the redeemed of the Lord. The real worship, and this is why we miss it, and we want the band to do it, we want the praise team and the choir to do it, we want the deacons and the folks in the pew to do it, we want the pastor to do it, and then we want to lip sync and karaoke, and we think because they're looking at the exterior that we got them fooled, that we really are worshiping. You can't judge me how I get my praise on. I'm praising God like this. Thank you, Jesus. My eyes closed. Stillness of my soul. My soul is jumping. My soul is running. Been running for Jesus a long time. Ain't got tired yet. I got it. I got it. Oh, my sisters and brothers, I've concluded a long time ago, I'm not playing church with y'all no more. I'm not playing with God no more. He's been really good to me. He, he not only has delivered me, he's delivering me. Every day he's delivering me. I am not the man I was five years ago. I'm not the man I was before COVID. I'm not even the man I was last week. The Lord is delivering me. He's growing me up. He's favoring me. He's pouring out more blessings upon me. He's revealing things to me. He's been too good to me for me to be cool on him. I've got to praise his name. I've got to worship him with all of me. And, 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 and let me help you with this. Because real worship is, is not formal. Real worship don't go A, B, C. No. See, A, B, C is for our logical minds. But God goes above that. And when the Holy Spirit gets busy with us, it don't make sense sometimes. Why you got to shout like that? Why you got to dance like that? In fact, why you got to do it? Why you got to go to church all the time? In fact, Real saints of God don't go to church all the time, but they worship <laughs> all the time. They, they, they going to get their worship. And when you're worshiping God, you're going to go to the house of God. You're going to hang out with the people of God. I got to wrap this up. But I, I, want, I, I really want you, I'm going to call the praise team or Reverend Davenport and the band back up. You know, while we're getting ready for baptism, we're going to get our praise. I really want you not to leave here today and not worship God. Don't leave here today and don't surrender the best of you to him. Remember I told you worship is ascribing worth. God is a spirit. You are spirit clothed in a body. Give God you. If you give God you, God will give you more of him. And his power is greater than your power. His peace is greater than your peace. His plan is so much greater than your plan. Next, next Sunday, we are um, doing a harvest fest because next Sunday our nation 
does this thing called Halloween. Some of the saints don't like that because they say that's ghosts and goblins. We don't deal with no ghosts and goblins. I do. The Holy Ghost. And church folks. But Halloween is celebrated traditionally with folks masquerading. Putting on facades. <laughs> and these days, literally wearing masks. But the mask that covers the face is nowhere near as big as the mask that's covering so many lives. And people just will not be genuine, authentic, honest. We live in a plastic time, superficial saints, ceramic Christians. Everybody want to be pretty. Everybody want to be perfect. Ain't nobody cussing and drinking in the church house. But in the parking lot, they lighten up. On social media, they cussing like a sailor. We come to church, just like Halloween, looking for tricks and treats. Though we've been tricked, if anybody been in church any length of time, and been tricked, you thought somebody was real and genuine, only to find out it was a facade. You thought somebody really was your friend? Only to find out they just wanted something from you. But we come because we want a treat. <laughs> we, want we, want, we come because we want something sweet. We want something to be added to us that will make us feel inspired. Give us strength to go on a little further. To become our best self. We, we want the treat. But the only way you get the treat and not the trick in worship is that you can't be tricking. You have to give you to God. It don't matter what the person next to you think. It don't matter what the folks at home think. It don't matter what anybody think. You know how good God has been to you. You, you know how, how, how close to the edge you were to offer your own self. You know how close you were to the edge to offer somebody. You know how close you were to really messing your life up. But God had mercy upon you. God woke you up this morning. God tapped you on the shoulder and said, you need to go to church today. You need to go to church. You need to get in the house of the Lord today. You need a word today. And today, God said, look, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I've been seeking. I just want you to worship me. can you just give me you? Don't worry about what else. Can't just give, give me your cares. Give me your burdens. Give me your bills. Give me your enemies. Give me you. Just give me you. If you give me you, I promise you will not be me given. Just give me you. Every time. Tell you, every time I worship God, he always give me far more. I don't even ask for it no more. I don't even seek it. I just know that when you give God, you, he works things out. When you give God, you, he sneaks money in your pocket. When you give God you, he give you peace that passes all understanding. When you give God you, 
He gives you joy that you can't find at the bottom of a bottle, at the end of a joint, end of a lay or play. No, he gives you real joy, unspeakable joy. I mean joy that your money can't buy. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but somebody been playing church, playing religion. Like this Samaritan woman, you've been worshiping ignorantly. And God has been mercifully gracious to you. Today, he says, I'm seeking those who are going to worship me in spirit and in truth. Who are going to give me their spirit to my spirit. And truth is, you're going to worship me according to the knowledge that I have already recorded and reported in my word to you. If you do that, Great and awesome things awaits you. I promise you, on everything that I know and everything I believe, your eyes haven't seen, your ears haven't heard, it haven't come close to your imagination what great and awesome things. I don't care how old you are, you're never too old to be great and to be what God wants you to be. I don't care how young you are, God uses babes as well as he uses seniors. I don't care how messed up you are. I told you God works in our mess. I don't care what others have said about you. Listen, if you're tired of being where you are and you need something different at this stage in your life, listen to what Jesus said over 2,000 years ago. He said, come to me, all of you who are tired from the heavy burden that you've been forced to carry, and I will give you rest. So I want to invite you today to just come just as you are. God loves you just the way you are. He just loves you too much to leave you that way. So won't you come? If you're thirsty, come. If you're hungry, come. If you're broke and broken, come. If you're tired and weary, you can come. He said, come now and let us read them together. And though your sins be bright red, I'll wash them white as snow. He said, come while it's day, for the night is going to come when you won't be able to come. So won't you come to him who came for you? He came as a baby. He lived as a servant. He died as a man. But he got up as a God, because that's who he is. And make no mistake about it, he came for you. He lived for you. He died for you. He got up for you. He left for you. He's praying for you. And he's coming back again for you. So won't you come to him today? He woke you up this morning to come. He spared your life so you could have this opportunity to come. He made a way for you to hear this and see this today so that you could come. My recommendation is that you would come who have not yet come to him. Right where you are, you can pray this simple prayer. Father, forgive me for all of my sins. I believe Jesus is your son. I believe he loved me, he came for me, and he died for me. And I believe he got up from the dead. And I believe he's coming back again. Father, please come into my heart. Come into my life and make me what you'll have me to be. I surrender my all to you. In the name of your son, And my now Savior and Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. So glad to have more family members. God wants us all saved. But everybody won't be, but I'm glad that you are. So now can I encourage you to find a church home that you can connect with. And you can learn more about God and learn more about prayer and the Bible and Jesus. And most of all, Learn more about God's will for your life. I promise you, God wants more for you than you want for you. I asked you to come today because I came, and he made such a wonderful difference in my life and in the lives of millions of others. I know he's going to do the same for you. Peace. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe to this YouTube page for more videos. You can also catch us every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. on Facebook Live. Or you can catch us on our website 
at www.lbethel.com where you can register to come visit us here in Redford, Michigan. Listen, if you were blessed by this ministry, by this message today, then won't you consider giving by mail? You can mail it in or you can use Cash App or you can use Givelify. We're there also. But know this, we can't wait to connect with you again. Peace.